Welcome to our AnimeCons TV feedback episode for October 2015. I'm Doug Wilder and I'm taking a break from re-watching the new Star Wars trailer again and again and again to answer your feedback. Once a month we take an episode to respond to the comments and answer any questions you guys submitted to us. So let's start off with some YouTube comments. In response to our September 2015 feedback episode, the J-Rock fan writes, the only reason I do not pre-register is because I usually only attend cons on Saturday. I wish that con would start having pre-reg for a single day because I hate standing in line for hours just for a single day ticket. And related to that, uh, Spark1 writes, or at a major co uh, comic conventions at least, they have one day passes and weekend prices being much higher than just Saturday at the door given that there's still tickets left. I understand that's kind of the thing of coming, you know, only going for one day of the convention, and that's kind of one of the things you have to weigh when you're looking at expenses on whether or not con is going to, you're going to go to it or not. Usually, it's how much time do you want to spend. If I, personally, if I'm going to a convention, I'm usually going to go for multiple days, or I'm going to get in extra early just so I can be there for a full day and get in as soon as registration's open. I mean, that's kind of the, like I said, it's kind of the risk you play. Um, as far as pre-registration, I tend to always pre-reg whenever I can, as soon as I know I'm going to a convention, just because you don't want to be waiting and you don't want it to sell out. No, nothing sucks more than getting all ready to go to a convention and being on your way there and finding out that you can no longer get in. So if you really want to go to a convention and you know nothing's going to step in your way, I say pre-register. And if you're, and I understand, you know, if you're only going for one day, that's again the risk, but I think it's a lot of times a matter of how much do you really want to go to and you have to understand the risk. Uh, in response to our Fall Kraken Con 2015 uh, report, with a K uh, writes, Nice vid, guys. It was great meeting you guys there. Uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's always nice to meet fans of the, the podcast. If you see us at a con, please say hi. We like talking to you guys. We like hearing what you like, what you don't. And it, it's neat to kind of put a face to the fans and know that you guys are enjoying it. So definitely cut, don't be afraid to say hi. Uh, we don't bite. Well, Maybe sketch, but don't worry. Shiva keep, keeps an eye on him and make sure he behaves himself. Um, and Spark1 writes, Apparently, if I'm seeing right, there uh, it doesn't appear that horns are banned like Kantaikon for this con being shared public venues with tight spaces. I honestly haven't heard anything about horns being banned at any convention. That's a very unusual thing. I mean, Kraken Con's on an aircraft carrier, so the narrow hallways definitely... I could see how that would be a concern, but it's one of those things that, you know, whatever your costume or prop is, definitely be aware of the limitations of the space, you know, and maybe if you're going to a, a tighter space um, that it's not there for your costume, take a break. I mean, I, one of my pet peeves when I'm going sit through, say, like Artist Alley or Dealer's Room or something like that, is when someone has a huge prop and they're not coming or going to a, a photo shoot there to just set it to browse. It's kind of like, go back to your hotel room, go back to your car, whatever, drop stuff off. That way you have less to carry. And it makes life a lot easier, too. I know it's, you know, you, you want to show off your costume and that's great, but just remember that it's easier to navigate. And once again, I honestly hadn't heard of any convention banning horns, so that'll be interesting. Uh, Spark One. It, write us an email, let us know a little bit more about that. I'm kind of curious about that rule. Um, and we got an email from Joe who says, I just saw the Fall Kraken Con 2015 video on your channel and I really enjoyed your review and was happy to see that you had a great, unique experience. I know that you are wondering how the judges had worked so quickly and I want to let you know that there are actually a pre-judging event that lasted between 10 a.m and 1 or 2 p.m., in which the judges judged every single contestant individually so that they could hand out the awards after everyone had presented at the contest. 
Um, and that's kind of in response to the uh, Patrick mentioning that the masquerade actually went really fast. Uh, Joe continues, I was the winner for the Best Novice Award and was wondering when the Masquerade or co and Costume Contest video would be uploaded. I checked the extras on the website and your YouTube channel and I have yet to see it. Um, so actually that's up online now. If you go to our website animecons.tv slash extras, you'll be able to see it now. So that's up there. Um, and before we get up to uh, our usual routine of upcoming anime conventions, I'm going to do just a quick mini con report. Uh, just recently I went to oh, oh, uh, the Massachusetts Independent Comic Expo, also called MICE. And this was a free convention, and it was in, uh, just in a small section of Leslie University, which is uh, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, right next to Boston. Like You can still take the subway right there. The subway puts you basically at the foot of the building that this is in. And this was a really neat event. First of all, it was admission was totally free. Didn't cost you anything. Um, you didn't get a badge. You just got a little sticker that was you put on your shirt to show that you you they had counted you so they could keep track of how many people had come in the door. Um, it wasn't there weren't any really big names. I mean, there was maybe four v, very VIP guests uh, such as. Um, Ryan North, who's the writer of the current uh, uh, series, uh, The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, which if you're not reading, you need to fix that. That is an hysterical comic. But this was, you know, once again, this is, it focused on independent comics. This was a lot of smaller people. And it's a great example of a convention where the motto, you know, that we always say, you know, just because a con's bigger doesn't make it better. This was a smaller event. It had, you know, maybe three rooms that it took up, and plus a lecture hall that they used for panels. But it was really neat to see. Um, the best way I can describe it is picture going to a convention, if you've done them before, and you've seen Artist Alley. Picture Artist Alley being the only real thing about the event and the focus on it. So you're there to really talk with artists, see their stuff, see what they're up to. It was really neat to see us got a lot of stuff and once again because admission didn't cost anything I had a more money to spend at the the artist table and stuff so I got a couple really neat things stuff that I had never seen before and it was a, a lot of really smaller things but it's once again it's really a good example of you know bigger isn't always better so keep an eye out for smaller conventions, especially stuff at colleges and universities near you, because that's a way you can see more neat stuff. And once again, that was the Massachusetts Independent Comic Expo and MICE, and we actually made a point of getting it added to the fancons.com database, so if you want to check out a little bit more about it, you can do so there. All right, now let's take a look at the anime conventions that are coming up through the end of the year, as found on animecons.com. thinning out and we're gonna hit the cons <laughs> conventions for 2016 soon but coming up on anime cons tv next month elizabeth is back with a cosplay help episode on applique patrick heads back to snafu con in reno nevada and i've got another segment that we'll have to see in there but in the meantime you can leave us a voicemail our phone number there is 762-ADEQUATE, that's 762-233-7828.
If you're waiting at line in, the convent, in line at a convention, did you see something awesome that happened? Give us a call, let us know. We always want to hear from you guys. You can also email us at podcast at animecons.tv. And don't forget to tell your friends to subscribe to us. They can subscribe to us on iTunes at itunes.animecons.tv on YouTube at youtube.com slash C slash Animecons TV or on our just on our website animecons.tv and you can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and Tumblr. And we'll see you guys next month. And uh, truck backing up. Have a uh, one-off event to bring it back here. Um,